I'm here to welcome a special guest to my podcast. Finally, it's Morgan Brown. Hey, how's it going? Morgan, we got this basically set up through a mutual friend of ours, uh, Mr. Robert Solomon of This Uncanny Earth. Yes, a wonderful, wonderful man. Now, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? And if you want, what do you do professionally? I am an artist. Um, I kind of do fluid acrylic art painting, and I kind of express myself through color. I'm not one who is able to draw that well. Uh, everybody says that you can draw, but I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> um, so with that said, I kind of just mix my colors and like to show my colors on a canvas, be it wood or actual canvas or whatever I feel like painting. One of the best forms of expression too. I mean, I really didn't truly appreciate art. I always talk about it until I got into college and I had an art appreciation class and my teacher was trying to get us into it was more art appreciation, art history. He was like how it correlates and all like the magnificent things you can learn through history about art and how it's kind of transformed through the years. And he gave me this project of trying to make it easy for me to understand it by using psychology, which I was super interested in at the time. And it was interesting to see how everybody, depending on what you grew up or what your life experiences were, what certain things mean to you, you know, you were attracted and you saw a different thing into a canvas. I mean, everybody sees art completely different, just like a cloud. Oh, yes, completely true. And I believe that it can awaken people who are disturbed and it can also comfort people who are seeking that comfort. So I feel that if art disturbs you, then it's awakening something in you that you weren't aware that you were blocking out or that you were not aware that you essentially possibly needed in your life. And it, it can be something as simple as a color or it can be something as eloquent as a drawing. I mean, if you go on recent art, there was a banana duct taped to a wall and it sold for $120,000. And then somebody ate the banana. It's it's all up to the eye of the beholder. Really, it, it, it's an expression of somebody's self, and it's an expression of how they perceive things, in my opinion. I know you're trying to fight the side of art on this one, but with the banana one, I have to say that is bullshit, that some person got paid that much money to do that compared to where I've seen paintings and stuff like, for instance, your own. Your stuff should be something that should be highlighted a little bit more, but it's not really something you see. And what's interesting about it is the best way to explain your art to anybody listening. For me, what it means to me when I've seen some of your paintings and some of your work on your page is the fact of, I think of um, the movie Doctor Strange, where he enters that uh, the dark realm or whatever it is, and there's all that weird <laughs> DNA and molecule type stuff. That's immediately what I thought. I'm like, yo, this is that realm I'd be so afraid to be trapped in right now. Right. Yes, um, completely. I'm not going to defend the banana because I do think that was completely absurd for that price tag on a banana. <laughs> I mean, I can do the same thing and I got a teal wall. Does that include, you know, increasing the price because my walls are teal? Like, Teal's you know what one I'm of the saying? best colors too. It's like my favorite color. It goes great with my See, eyes. I, that's exactly the point. It brings out everybody's soul. That's, that's the whole purpose in my opinion. And um, that's kind of why I enjoy colors so much is because to me, colors represent different things. Um, they represent different emotions. They express what you're feeling and what you're trying to convey. So for somebody who might not be eloquent with their speech or how they talk grammarly or politically, whatever the case may be, you know, like a backwoods country bumpkin like myself, you know, or you're just somebody who doesn't get that outlet in life where you, you don't have somebody to, to talk to or whatever the case may be. I feel that, you know, by picking this color, this is what I'm feeling at the moment, or this is what I want the world to feel, or I want whoever is viewing this to feel. So that's why I like to say, um, let me add a splash of color to your life because each person needs a certain color to kind of brighten up their day. If you look, everybody right now is all about, oh, what vibe do I put out? What color do I put out? What aura do I put out? And it's, it's kind of astonishing how people 
I guess you could say it's with the new age movement, again, wave two that's going around, but it's astonishing how much people are relating to nature and color theory. Yeah, I think uh, what's interesting about colors is not only what, what they can mean to you, but also what they can mean to the people around you. It's always, um, there's like this, uh, like you were saying, color theory, but more of a, there's a color therapy thing where certain colors release out certain emotions. And we talk about red being anger, you know, but if like for me, for instance, wearing a white shirt and mostly bright color things, it's more inviting for someone that is around me to see that and gives them more open and more of the, I guess, an access to want to have a conversation rather than like black or something something but what they always say black slimming so it's like we uh, like for me i like wearing black i mean it's cool i like it it's a dark color as well it's supposed to have a gravity of a situation as well um it also soaks up heat pretty quick where white really doesn't uh so i mean it, it's pretty interesting if you really want to go down to the narrow of it of trying to like just go out in public and just start observing everybody's appearance not on the basis of cost like we always do it's more on the basis of like well, they're wearing a pink. It's so inviting where you kind of want to come in for a conversation. And, you know, like we talk about teal or blue. One of the reasons why it's one of my favorite colors is not only that it resembles the ocean, but what does the ocean usually represent into your mind or when it's played on a screen somewhere? If it's not like deep blue sea where the ocean's dark blue and black creates a whole drastic another effect of just mm -hmm. anger or type of like rage or type of like out of controlness and then when it's nice and blue like a light blue and a calm it's very serene it's peaceful it's why we have the sounds of the ocean on like 50 mixtapes to listen to while we're you know trying to cool down or something absolutely. no absolutely that is completely true and when people look at different things like the color black like that is a prime example and people often think like black is a very negative attachment and it really is honestly in my opinion quite opposite i look at black as very it, it blacks things out so it's, to me if if you're wearing black you're kind of like wearing a a protective armor for for your person for your spirituality because you're not you're not letting bad vibes in. You're not letting, you know, not saying that you're not going to let in the good things, but I mean, it's protective, in my opinion, for your core, for not letting somebody else's bad time and bad moment affect you. And I mean, some people are going to be like, well, that's kind of contradicting. That doesn't make any sense. That kind of is a double negative, like you're blocking things out, but you're only blocking out the bad. To me, that's, that's what it means to me. To each person, it, it means something along the same lines, but probably slightly different. There are similarities when it comes to, like you said, color therapy. And there's a base guideline of it. But then at the same point, I also feel that that's why I like being an artist, that what it means to you is not going to mean the same thing to me. So I can sit there and I can, yeah, definitely, without a doubt, pour my heart and soul into something, literally. And I can come out with paint all over my hair, all over the bottom soles of my feet, all over my hands. And I can be like, all right, I really like this blue and this yellow because this is what it means to me. And then somebody can look at it and be like, well, yellow to me means like sorrow, sympathy, comfort. And blue also means calming to me. Meanwhile, for the person you know who is looking to buy it they can be like oh well to me it represents my business colors it's inviting it welcomes you in it is something that catches your eye so to each their own i mean in life that's kind of how it is everybody has a different vice and a different opinion some people might like a cup of tea and some people like robert solman might like a shot of whiskey you know shameless plug there but that's just you know that's just how it is. It's, and that's kind of how I look at life. So, because I make something one way doesn't mean that how I'm looking at it, you're going to look at it the same way. Yeah. For instance, if I asked you, what does the color blue and picture into your mind when I, when, if you envision the color blue, what do you picture with it? What do you picture something? I immediately picture an ocean. I immediately picture you know, things that are blue, but things that are more of a, have certain meaning or a link to me. Oh yes, exactly. And I was just going to bring that up. It's kind of 
in my opinion, when I think of blue, I also go to the ocean, but I also go to the sky as well. Um, as a child, I was constantly on the ocean, my a good portion of my life. So I instantly think of blue and I think of the ocean because it brings me back to that good time of my childhood where I was able to be out on a boat and I was able to go crabbing and, and fishing and stuff like that. But then I also think of the sky because to me, the sky associates blue as limitless. Your, your possibilities are limitless. You have a passion, you have ambition. So to me, I look at it as you, you can go from absolute bottom to the absolute top. So that's what it means to myself. So what about red? Each, what is what is what does red mean to you? That is a deep fiery passion, but it can also be a bit of a, a expression of anger. With that said, I also think the first thing I think of with red though is like an apple. Everybody goes to apple. But then I also think of a rose. So you have something that's I guess you could say mundane as the apple because Yes, it is an apple. I mean, what more can you say about an apple? An apple is an apple, correct? You do have different colors of apples, but when you're just talking on the red scale, you have a red apple. That's, that's the pretty basic of what everybody thinks. But then when you look at a rose, you look at the beauty that's inside of a rose and the deep passion that there is and the deep fire that is there and how a rose can literally practically grow in anything or if not maintained die with over care so i mean it's it, it depends on the frame of mind i believe that you're also looking at it if you are able to be open enough to not only look past the negative to appreciate the negative because you have to have negative in order to have the good because if you didn't have the good and the bad to a yin and yang, then you would only know one or the other. Well, from so, like my own artist's interpretation, I'm not an artist at all, but from like my own just trying to analyze art or trying to see, like coming across a lot of your paintings too, they're developed with a lot of darkness, a lot of dark colors, a lot of like, you know, cool colors, I would say, more of on the lines of cold, but there's hints and sparks of light in it. Which like from like an intro, if I was going to write a paper on an analysis of what that would mean psychology wise would be like, you know, feeling lots of kind of dark, but you know, painful things, but with hints of light, meaning that there's always like a hope and there's always like these good times that you know that are these random bursts of happiness that you like you cling on to that are there, but it's just surrounded and kind of clouded in a way. Oh, absolutely. Um, I will not deny that at all, especially right now in my life. Um, I do have a lot of things that are going on. So that is why I associate a lot with dark colors right now. But at the same point, I do realize that I could dwell here at this dark point in my life, or I can focus on the light that is there and the, the good that is there. Just because there is dark times does not mean that there isn't light ahead or that there isn't light down at the end of the tunnel. I try my best to be the kind of person to convey as much passion and as much hope and love as possible. It does take a lot of energy out of you when you're constantly giving and giving and giving to everybody else that you don't save anything for yourself. So yes, I, I have personally at the moment been associating more with dark colors uh, or as a dark undertone. And then I try to keep my lighter colors on the top so that, yes, you can come from a horrible, horrible past. Yes, you can have horrible, horrible things going on in your life. But there is, as long as there's a will, there's a way. You want to pull yourself out of it, you can pull yourself out of it. Yeah. You just need to focus and shift your mindset. It's well, it's all, what's crazy about it is because when I see that, it's a, a very, very common to what a lot of artists are creating nowadays, mostly because a lot of the world is just associated with dark colors now, mostly like this kind of gloom and seems like it seems to be representing about a little bit what's going on with our country, too. But like mm -hmm. we used to like back in the day, there used to be bright colors all the time, everybody'd be wearing certain colors, you know, reds, blues, but like bright 
versions of them, not just dark shades. And we've just got associated with the dark times and it, it just seems to fit properly. Like the same reason why before I put on this like white shirt, I was looking at a black shirt. I was like, ah, I might want to wear that. You know, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's weird. And it's weird to see the mood shifts too. Like if I was going to wear a black mm -hmm. shirt, I'd probably be a little bit more calm and cool or a little bit kind of like, you know, deeper, more maybe inner thinking, I would say. But in the white, I'm all bright and ready to be enthusiastic about it too, because like I said, what really gets me about art is the way that people interpret the meaning of it. For instance, one of my favorite things is the Rorschach test, where it's just these blobs in black yes. and you trying to explain what you see. It's the same thing that I immediately thought of as well when I saw your art was the fact of like, I could take this and run anywhere. That's why I love abstract art. That's why I love anything that is not a specific object. I mean, how many times do you come across a freaking apple sitting on a table? I mean, it's you can still pull things out of that, but that's what it is. That's what the artist was doing. You immediately are gonna be like, oh, this guy was just drawing fruit on a table. But if I toss one of your pictures up at somebody and ask them, what do you see? Uh, like, I don't know, give me a minute. I actually have to think on this one. And, that's what's awesome is because you're going to see something completely that I'm going to see. I might see, you know, the parallel universe and Dr. Strange that scares the crap out of me. You're going to see something mm -hmm. completely different and you're also going to feel something completely different. And I really kind of am upset when I was a kid that I didn't really take in art. I don't think it was taught and focused as much. I think a lot of subjects weren't really, you know, it was kind of just like, Hey, you showed up, why don't you draw something? That's cool and all, but like, Man, when I went to a first art museum and I actually looked up, like I have a painting in my studio of just uh, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night, but to look at the brush strokes on how that was created and see how, oh, this goes to yes. the right and this swirls downwards and goes in a different pattern, like he had to go a different way with it. And then when I'm doing art, I'm just sitting there like, I have no freaking clue. I made a stick figure. <laughs> yeah, like barely in the hands. Like I try and do realistic hands. I can't do that one. It look like bananas. I'm the same way. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. I completely understand that. And I guess that's why I kind of like fluid art because I, I will be the first to admit, you can ask any of my friends. A majority of my friends that actually know me are like, oh yeah, Morgan, she's a hot mess. She's mass chaos. That's just, that's how she is. It's how I've always been. I'm always that, that person that's like, oh yeah, I got to do this. But before I do that, I got to do this. And before I do that, I got to do that. And I just, I, I'm one of those kind of people. There is organization, but it's scattered. So with fluid art for me, it is very relatable because, yeah, I can, I can put my colors together. And I can envision it happening one way, but there is no definite guarantee it's going to happen that way. Don't get me wrong. There is some technique to it, and there is a good bit of technique to it, but it's not technique as, okay, you know, if I go this way with that brush stroke, then it's going to interpret that going that way. It's more of a, I need my paint to be this kind of thickness in order for this one to stand out a little bit more predominant than that one. So it has a little bit more of a mathematical science to it. And um, I guess that's kind of why I enjoy it so much because that's what I focused on in, in school. I kind of focused on algebra and I'll be that first person to tell you I liked algebra. I, I liked trigonometry probability. Don't do this I to enjoyed. Me. Don't do this to me. I hate math. <laughs> They're killing me. They're killing me with the math. I'm sorry. I'm you know, sorry. I will. I'll stop. It, it does go down to a science though too, because uh, one of my uh, childhood best friends, um, you know, he always wore black clothing. Always wore like the same Jack Skellington T-shirt over and over again. Um, very very shy when he was around people, like even his own family. But for some reason, whenever we would hang out, it was just talk, 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 talk. talk talk and he'd always draw stuff i'm like wow this is really good stuff man he goes yeah 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 like i know i know i'm like all right all right, all right we get it you're gloating and then um but he would do this type of spray paint art that you would see like a perfect nature like the moon on top of the water with like in the middle of a valley or something i'm like how are you doing this and he starts pulling out construction paper rulers and all this stuff and covering stuff up and spray painting in different patterns and stuff i'm like this is really 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 
really good and it's really, really precise. Like all the calculations that you're doing to be able to form this thing. Like this is a Bob Ross type thing. And he just goes, it's pretty simple. I'm like, no, it's not. Like a lot of people can't do this. And I'm pretty sure you probably yeah. notice too when you're doing your art and people are giving you compliments or people are wanting to buy something from it. It's just like, for you, it's so simple. It's like the pathways can open up, but for somebody else, it's so different. And when we talk about the mix of emotions that kind of run through your head when you're making something, I mean, using it as a form of therapy, when you come home after a long day or you just can't sort anything out in your own head, it's so easy just to probably come home and just scrape whatever, just do any type of paint style you prefer, you want, when any colors you want to use. It's so easy to be able to express yourself through that. It's like listening to a, a mixtape. If I'm ever down in the hole or something, I'll listen to Alice in Chains. I'll listen to Green Day. I'll admit if I have my teenage angst or whatever you want to call it, I'll be like, you know, last of the American girls or something because she wrote her name on the wall, like graffiti on the walls of the yes. highway. I'm like, oh God, like it hits me right here. Like I get all of that, yep. like put the hood my up. Soul. Yeah. yeah. That's so amazing that art can do that. And I'm like, there's got to be a way we can fix the way the world kind of seems like it's hurting right now. By just incorporating this into like a free activity for a lot of people, I know everybody's not going to want to get, oh, I don't want to get paint on my new shirt. Okay, that's all right. I understand that. Um, but I mean, as kids, like little, you know, let's make art a bigger thing. We have them sitting in a yes. room listening to, you know, watching a movie or, you know, I love history as much as the next guy, but recess, you know, I love that too. I never really got it when I was mm -hmm. a kid because I always got in trouble, but Put the kid down on some paper and paint, man. I loved art class. Mm -hmm. I loved just trying to create something. I hated it when we did the uh, the weaving, like trying to knit stuff or something. Like oh, geez, yeah. that was a pain. I always poke myself with the needle, but the whole fact I, was I like, didn't. No, yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> but like I didn't art, do the whole sewing. Art is just it's it's one of the. It's always seen on movies. And it's always shown like museums and every artist, like, oh, he's an artist, always creative, always messy, always all this type of stuff. But a lot of times movies paint him as a pretentious person or some gives it kind of a little bit of a discriminative type thing to it. And I'm like, man, if you really, I mean, we all have free time where we just try and sketch something. I have this little sketch I do all the time when I'm just bored or when I'm just, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to sort things out in my head. And it, the best I can think of, explain it is like, I don't know, like a black and white tar that just looks like it's morphing into each other and going in and out. And I just draw all over. Next thing I know, the whole paper's covered. I'm like, I got to turn this into something. Yeah, because obviously if it's coming up, it means something to you. You relate to it in some sort of way, even if it's something that it gives you that moment to disassociate and step away from your mundane life. And I think that's something that we as society kind of often forget to do when we're children. And I mean, the, referring to what you just said, when we're children and we're in school, we literally go from being able to run around and have fun and use as much imagination as we possibly had. And then we, we're put into school where we have all of this imagination. Our creative minds are going, 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 but they curve that to fit to what it needs to be taught. And don't get me wrong. Yes, there are a lot of things that need to be taught and there, the education system is a whole different subject. But I do, I do completely agree where when it comes to art class, they need to, instead of just putting the kid down and saying here here's markers and here's colored paper yeah don't get me wrong that's great for the first couple of years but then they also should offer in my opinion something in school where it's like okay yeah art is cool but if you really want to get into art and you want to know about art therapy and you want to know the basics of art theory then you can have that option just like you have with band class and some schools do have that but unfortunately my school really didn't and um i kind of reached out into culinary arts for that reason and that's that's a different subject too but that kind of brings back to my my favorite childhood memory of school of when i was in school my teacher said all right you know draw something out 
And then from there, we're going to break everything down into one inch squares. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? She's like, and then you're going to take that one inch square and you're going to divide it at a bias and you're going to put two triangles. She said, with that, no two colors can touch. No, no same color can touch the color that you just put down in that square. So if you put a red down the lower corner and you put a blue up in the, or, you know, vice versa, the top corner, you couldn't use blue or red next to those two. You couldn't touch your blue to red again. So it kind of, to me, opened the door of colors of, okay, if I mix these colors together with this color pencil and this crayon, yeah, I have red and blue, but it's like a cobalt blue, which is cool, but it has more purple than it does have blue to it. So yes, it's still blue, but it still has purple as an overhue and a blue underhue. So yes, I am putting blue next to blue, but it's not blue next to blue. And that's kind of what opened my mindset about it. And that kind of turned me on to enjoying brighter colors with a darker background because yes, some colors are very opaque and some colors are very translucent. And depending on what kind of color, if you're using translucent or opaque, that's where my mind kind of, that's where the scientific geek in me comes where it's like, okay, well, it looks more appealing to the eye doing it this way. And that's the traditional way. Well, what if you don't do it the traditional way and you kind of step back and look and think outside the box and try and achieve the same result and still get the same mental image and expectation, if that makes sense. You learned all that from that class or that one thing? No, um, <laughs> that kind of just opened my eyes to it, honestly. I'm um I'm a little bit of a empathic kind of person, intuitive am, kind of person. I, I am I am a little bit empathic too. Uh I didn't really find that out until like I was just I guess I was really good at reading people and kind of sensing energies off people, whether in a certain direction I needed to go in a conversation without really knowing the person. Um but for me, like I learned about shading and all this type of stuff and it was so confusing. And I remember like the Crayola 48 pack was really what got me. Like I was sticking the gold and the silver ones in my pockets thinking that like that was currency. Like that was the <laughs> stuff everybody wanted and everything. Um, but like one of this art memory that I have, which has completely changed the way I will forever look at my name. Um, I did it around third grade and it was, you were supposed to draw your initials so my initials are rr but you had to do them like it was basically just the first one so mine both match so you had to do the giant one on half the piece of paper when you folded it you had to fold it you had to do one on one side the giant r then on the other side a giant r and when you open it up the two would form um like kind of looking like a mirror like a reflection it was supposed to teach us mm -hmm. about the reflecting of stuff and I remember she was like, now use that and draw whatever you want and always just add something to it, turn it into whatever you want. And I just drew it and I turned my whole initials into an alien. And I was like, holy shit, like the, the tops of the R's, the giant balloon part looking things, those are his shoes. And like, I was just going all out on it. And she was like, yeah. And like, I still remember that to this day. And it's crazy because I was like cleaning out my attic when we were moving like a year ago. And, um, if you're just looking through all the old stuff I used to do at art class and all the things that were still saved up to this day, some stuff you would never be able to tell, like if, if that was art mm -hmm. or not, it looked like I gave up halfway, which I probably did. Mm -hmm. But like I made a little, like it was a wind chime that you put in the doorway. But for, I mean, when I did that when I was like seven and for years until like my mom was like, Oh yeah, it's a, it's a good like reflection thing for the window. I'm like, that's a wind chime. And I, it, it's been like, what? I, like 15 years and she's like i've been thinking for 15 years this thing is just a little decoration you put in the window i was like that's a it's a wind chime it's not that yeah. bad and she was like no it's it's beautiful i just didn't know there's no chimes on it i was like yeah because it's supposed to reflect in your garden and she was like oh well i'm gonna keep it because it looks better as a window decoration i'm like fuck <laughs> <laughs> but see that goes back to what we were talking about earlier by just because you meant it one way doesn't mean that she interprets it that way. And it's not that she's meaning it 
out of being ill hearted or anything. She's meaning it out of the goodness of her heart. But that's what is so beautiful about art is that it brings out, in my opinion, it brings out, like I said earlier, what, what people aren't aware that is inside of them and and it could be good or bad but at the same point for the most part it's usually good because at that point it's it's eye-opening because it's not something typically that somebody thinks about if that makes sense it kind of breaks you of that usual pattern and i think it's kind of crazy i mean what do you think about the factor of like reds yellows greens all these things we kind of use in society but they deem as certain things like for me whenever i see the color red you know stop sign you know stop bad no anger all these other types of things that get associated with it that's okay to mix with that color but like i think it also deters a lot of people from using those as well like if i gave somebody a 64 pack of crayons and asked them to pick whatever color they're feeling at the time or just pick one color usually the color they grab is the one that's most appealing that's fitting them in that situation that moment and I'm like, we could do yep. this so much in the world. If someone's having a giant problem or issue, big, like, okay, here you go. Pick a color and draw something. You can relate those two and figure out, okay, so what's going on? Is it this or did maybe a separation, maybe something that's happening in your life? Way better and easier way to get the, to the root of a problem for more people to be empathic and understand what a person's going through since we don't seem like we want to communicate really anymore. Completely true. And when you look, when you look at art from the 1800s, and we'll even go to as late as 1900s, like, you know, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and 50s, and look at the art style and how much it has changed, even though the art style has changed, the main focus of the colors is bright, vibrant eye color, like eye catching colors. And to me, that was the point of it is because it it drew your eye into it but I also it depends on I think it depends on the person's frame of mind like we keep saying and where they're at at that point and what they're feeling at that point like you said red people associate with the stop sign but you know some people also associate with rose or with blood if that might be the case Uh, yeah you know I mean try and name something red and then you you can't think of anything red that's I my got life trouble um, <laughs> so the reason why i associate red with like no or all these other types of things is because that's what i would commonly see when i was in trouble it's like no do not pass this point i'm like well i'm gonna pass mm-hmm. it because you told me not to exactly don't push the red button but i want to push the red button it says you know? staples on it it says that was easy right. i want to hit it <laughs> exactly i just want to that was easy <laughs> Um, but I think also, like you said earlier about the change and the shift in society from going from bright colors to darker colors, um, I think it kind of, it, it's not something that many people have noticed, especially like in advertising. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. You do have a lot of bright colors, but the, the undertone of a lot of advertising is still dark. You still have that dark background or you know even if it might be something as simple as a nail color or something you know just as an example or a pair of black jordans you know the the entire background might be white but then the object of focus is black or and i mean again that could just be my mindset of of we're talking about the darker colors right now so i'm focusing on the darker colors but that's that's kind of what i mean and it it's simple as where you want to be for the day and for the moment and how you want to be in my opinion and that's why i associate and and enjoy art so much because i'm going through a lot and it's something for me to actually sit down and enjoy disconnect from it all and and express myself it's something to to break that mundaneness and i i was working 40 50 60 hours a week at a grocery store and somehow i still managed to start up my page and start doing this paint pouring while working 50 60 hours a week and i did it at that point because 
it got me to sit down, relax, decompress, like you said earlier, and, and just step back and step out for that moment. Due to health reasons, I unfortunately can't work anymore. And the health issues I have weigh a lot on me as a person and my body. So for me, I'm using my art as, you know, yeah, life sucks. But at the same point, there's still greener things and better things. Like they always say, grass is greener on the other side. But at the same point, it also instills you to look upon what you already have and to appreciate what you already have. Because if not, what do you have in life? And, and that's kind of how, how I kind of put myself into my work. And I don't know if it's just because I am so empathic and I am slightly intuitive that I just, I feel for myself and I feel for everyone else. And with so much bad going on in the world and so much darkness and so much, you know, especially because here is my outside of the thinking box, but because it's a political election year, it's to distract us away from the positivity from the good and it's it's well, upsetting it's, it's it's a lot of the reason like I, I can relate to you on the empathy or empath, empathetic situation too like a reason why i go to the grocery store at three o'clock in the morning or used to before covid was the whole factor of i didn't want to run into anybody because if i go out into public in the middle of the day during a busy time let's say 4 p.m 3 p.m it just, I come across way too many people and I'm getting way too much emotions and too much information being processed. I can feel like I feel the energy around me a little bit, like the shit, like it's, it's like somebody farted in a room and everybody's paying attention to that person that just farted in a room. Exactly. Or, you know, it's all judging. It's all negative feelings and bad energies kind of, I don't want to turn into like, you know, the energy psychic person here, but it's more of the factor of like, you can sense when someone has a wet towel personality, you can sense when mm -hmm. someone's not interested, you can sense when someone's you know, enjoying a conversation, you can sense all these other types of things. And when you walk into the world nowadays, it's just emotionless and cold. And I think what happened was, we talk about what people are wearing and what, how people choose to reflect themselves with maybe the colors they wear. We switch creativity and emotion, like back in the day, all these bright colors through Athens and Rome, all these reds that represented a warrior. And then Athens, all these beautiful mm -hmm. colors to help depict their art. That was all about expression, wearing all these bright, these purples, these golds, these all these other types of things that represent certain statuses and certain ways of being, in, you know, an emotional harmony. But we switched nowadays that creative emotion expression for branding. Oh, it's yep. Adidas. It's black, though. Doesn't matter. It has the Adidas logo on it. Mm -hmm. I mean... Yep that's when I think the world starts getting a little bit cold and you're not going to want to talk to a whole bunch of people and want to conversate even more. If everyone else is just wearing dark colors, you just want to do your own thing, go to the store, get what you need and then go home. You don't want to engage in that conversation, that opportunity. People talk about missed opportunities. You don't know if that person could have hired you for a job that you wanted your whole entire life because you just ignored the fact that, Oh, I just want to get home. I don't feel like talking to anybody yep. today. Yep, absolutely, completely. And I, <clears throat> pardon me, I completely agree with that. And looking back at what year was it when they had the whole long hair need not apply? I mean, there's a song off of it. And just because somebody was completely overqualified for what the job position was, guy had long hair, so he wasn't, he wasn't allowed to apply for the position. So with that being said, just because, okay, you got Joe Schmo, the hard worker over here who has carpenter pants on, his belt is a little bit too loose, his pants are sagging a little bit, but you know, they're not sagging in a bad kind of way. He's got stains all over his shirt. He's covered it in, you know, dirt and grease. Does he not appreciate art? Does he not appreciate everything that is going on in the world to me i think he does because he's an industry of helping people so therefore he's helping fix things so in my eyes i associate that person of of somebody who feels a lot and now this is slightly judgmental but at the same point without trying to cast stones you look at somebody who has higher end clothing 
and is worried about red bottom heels or Jordans or uh, what is everybody worried about now? Baby fat. That's that, that shows you my level of caring of, of branding. Um, I got baby face. Uh, that's why I have to I, <laughs> hair just to help out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, like if everybody cares, like you said about branding, then we disassociate ourselves from a connection and we kind of put up walls that nobody ever kind of cares to tear down and everybody just goes oh yeah that's another wall you know and I'm kind of more of that person of no let's bust down those walls let's not put up that wall why why put up that wall and block something in why well why not we're built in a society we're built in a society of comparison sadly I mean I've exactly we, we've all noticed it it goes back to the old term we brag in public and we cry in private you know mm-hmm. people choose to wear main brand things and care how other people look at them or think of them before they do anything because they don't want to be associated as a certain wealth class or and we've learned to label things as certain wealth classes based on whatever brand you're wearing if you're wearing an off brand your seam is like middle class lower middle class if you're and it's it's a really twisted and weird way of thinking in this world based on that we're going to judge people on what they have and what you know what they don't have and even that it comes from a selfish little bit of intent too where it's like man i wish i had that car it's like okay why are we doing that and not trying to judge the person based on their actual moral compass of our is it a good conversation i'm having with this person or are they just a bad person in general are they kicking puppies on the street what are they doing we're not we're not judging on that we're judging on the factor of well he's got nikes on or he's got the newest Jordans, or he's got the newest whatever. It's like, all right, well, what does that mean about the person's character? They could have that nice ass car, but still be struggling bill to bill to bill, you know, crying and handing out or trying to get loans as much as possible. I mean, one of the main things I I think I want to do with my life is the factor of social work. I want to, there's areas and i think it starts a lot when you're a kid and just the way that a lot of time isn't focused in as much as it should be mostly it's no fault of the parents not at all i don't think in some cases i think it's just the factor of we live in a world that is if you were going to ask what when i if i look at the world i don't see this giant green thing that you would see in like an actual picture of the earth i see a shaded out version of it i see a black and white drawing and the whole thing is just darkened in and the reason why is because we're very very cold we're very very isolated from each other we um this world society everything has kind of grown up a little bit too i mean and if you want to put it in art forms i would only ask for a red crown i would only ask for a black crown i would only ask for a gray crown because that's all it is we're we're not caring for each other anymore i feel it when i go out into the world it just it's it's either it's not like everybody's trying to like, Oh, get on, you know, attack everybody. It's more on the factor of it's just cold. It's just, you walk out and you people carry themselves differently. Yeah. And it's, it's upsetting. So I'm trying to figure out where could we incorporate something to be able to fix this. And I think it does come from art a little bit. I think there's many other factors that fit, like kind of trickle in, but I feel like, brighter colors more stuff being known let's bring back creativity instead of branding i mean we lost something there yep absolutely and with that said if you want to look at coincidentalness and irony what's going on in the world right now i mean we are we are at a point right now where it is crucial to our society and what's going on with our society and in our society and how our society will function after and how it will be after. And we're all stuck inside. So in my opinion, I think that this, and I mean, you can call me an energy person if you want to, this is the kind of right now the world telling us like, Hey, y'all need to do some self-reflecting because this is not where we should be going. This is not how we should be going about this. And I personally feel that art, no matter what form it may be, be it music or paintings or drawings or billboards, art has the power to change the world. Keywords, art has the power to change the worlds. 
with that being said, it is up to you and the person viewing it and creating it to make it happen. So in my opinion, do you sit there and keep your art to yourself or do you put your art out there for more to see? And yes, in a way, it is self-marketing, but at the same point, it also impacts those viewing it. So by using brighter colors, by taking that chance of being like, eh, this isn't something that I particularly like, but I'm going to post it anyway. I'm going to let some people see it anyway. These aren't the colors that I was, you know, necessarily thinking were going to come, come together and happen, but somebody will like it. Just because I necessarily don't like it at that moment doesn't mean that somebody else will like it. Or just because I love it at that moment doesn't mean somebody else will. But it still has that power to project onto others. And if that person takes it and runs with it, so be it. If that person sits there, then I apologize, but you're not helping. And, and that's kind of my view on it. Have you ever come across, like, can you give me a certain memory where you've come across a piece of art that has really moved you or really, you know, hit you with such an emotion? Pollock, Pollock in his work, definitely. Um, due to the fact of, it's very freeing. It's, it's, if anybody were to take the time and, and look up Pollock in his artwork, it's, it's lines. But at the same point, it's freeing outside of those lines and it's rough lines. So to me, that kind of, in my mind, sets something off of, yeah, you can stay inside the lines or you can be outside the lines. If you stay inside the lines, then I mean, yeah, you can have something pretty awesome. But what happens if you go outside the lines? You could have something even better. So that's my mindset of it and yeah I mean some people go as simple as taking paint and throwing it onto a canvas literally like heaving a paint can across the room and throwing it onto a canvas and then you uh, have I love that where people just like <laughs> cover themselves in paint just start throwing themselves against yeah. the wall and slamming it up I love that type of stuff <laughs> Yes, basically. Mostly because um, I'm then, like not a big guy of getting like really, really messy. So when I see people do it, I'm like, good on you, man. I know how that's got to be to wash <laughs> all that off. Have fun in the shower later. <laughs> I hope you didn't get places you didn't want paint. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like that's, that's the point though. Like in my opinion, that's the point of art to be able to to free yourself that way, to be able to open your mind, to be able to open yourself, your psyche, your spirituality, whatever the case that you may feel it is at that moment. It's bringing to surface something that A, you probably haven't had in a while, B, is not something that you do often, and C, it kind of gives that little bit of enjoyment and that, that flame back to that imagination and creativity and your childhood years where you were carefree and you didn't have the stress of the mundane world of, okay, I got to pay my bills. I got to pay my mortgage. I got to make sure my lights you know, are taken care of. I got to make sure my car is taken care of. It, it gives you that moment to step out and disassociate and step back and look at everything that is going on. And that's, that's what I love about it. I think um, my introduction to really enjoying it wasn't just with, you know, the college class, but when I took a trip to Hawaii and we got off the airport after this long ass 12 hour plane ride, watching freaking Shark Tank over and over and over again. Oh my God. We were ready to go back to the hotel and get some sleep. There's a time difference there. So I was like, okay, it's, you know, it's basically bedtime for back home. So let's, let's try and uh, mm -hmm. get back to the hotel. I don't want to go out to dinner. I just want to go to bed. And as we're driving uh, through Hawaii, I started noticing graffiti all over the sides of the building. Some of the most beautiful art that had such a beautiful form of expression that would literally move me to tears. And recently I saw a thing on Facebook, a person put up a picture of, you know, graffiti that's going on in the world. And somebody painted Stevie Wonder playing a keyboard, I think in like Philadelphia under like a tunnel or something. And it went all along this wall. Like a yes, mural. I've seen that. 
and he's playing these notes and as the notes are coming off and floating on the piano, they're going farther and farther down the tunnel. And then there's mm-hmm. stuff coming off of those notes, like butterflies and things. And I'm like, Fuck. Yeah. like, that's something you stop and you like, you take that in. And the fact mm-hmm. that people could just ignore that and walk by it, it's like, are you really paying attention to everything that's going on around you? Cause like, yeah. this is something that, how did the person do it? How did the, how does someone have that much talent? And then not to like you, some of those guys don't even put their signature at the bottom. They just go off nope. into the night and they don't want any credit. I'm like, who is, nope. who is this? Like, who did this? And the fact that like, yep. I just don't even want to like go give you a million dollars. I just want to give you credit for making me feel something. I just want to shake your hand. Yeah. He probably yeah. was covered in paint, which would scare the shit out of yeah. me. But. <laughs> that, well, yeah, for you, but. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I completely agree. And that's the beauty of it is that some people do it for the money, but the true artists, and I'm I'm not saying or discrediting any artists who make art for money are not artists. But I'm saying if you're in it for the money hunger aspect of it, you're not observant and connecting because honestly, there's no money in art. When they say you're a starving artist, I mean, you are usually a starving artist. I got ramen noodles in my pantry for probably months, but that's besides the point. <laughs> you can tell me the secret like, on how to put those uh, flavor packets in there. I'd really appreciate it. You have to DM me that because I could never figure it out as a kid. You got to do it when you put the water in immediately before it boils. Okay, you're boiling your it's, water. That's already out of my realm. I'm more of a microwave well, type guy. I figured out. Uh, see, that's the, your problem. I figured out like my first year of college, Keurig's work. I did not know that I could make ramen <laughs> so much easier. And I swear my life was changed. That and taquitos. They're better in the oven, but I don't know how to use the oven. So, so it's, a, it's a microwave it's situation. Okay. It's, it's okay. Just stick with the microwave. If that's, what, that's what you know. Just stick with the microwave. I'm comfortable okay. around it, okay? That's fine that's fine. That is perfectly a-okay. That's your cup of tea. I enjoy a shot of whiskey and that's, that's how we do that one. <laughs> Different levels on that one. Now, if I had to ask you, what's one thing of art that you aren't really a fan of? One, like for me, I, I don't know if it's not that I'm a fan. It's more that I'm really, really shocked that it could be art. And I consider that pointillism. The fact that someone could make those little tiny dots look exactly like a photograph or something. I'm like, that's a picture, bro. That's a picture. He pulled out his phone and took a selfie in the street. No, that's a bunch of little dots with a paintbrush. No, no, there's nobody in the world that can do that except Morgan Freeman. I'm sorry. There is no way (laughs) that's a real thing. And then you end up finding it. It's just, it shocks me so much that that could be an actual thing. Honestly, I that's kind of one of the things I appreciate in art as well is that you can literally sit there and take a whole bunch of dots of different colors and overall make a big picture out of it. Um, And I guess that's just kind of my, my way of thinking, I suppose, but I don't really, there's nothing in art that I don't really like except for textured paintings. And I don't, I don't know why, something about texture paintings and and paintings with giant cracks in the middle and like I can understand it but it mm, it's just something about it rubs me a little the wrong way now don't get me wrong that doesn't mean I don't appreciate like vomit clocks and like vomit pieces like that there's to me there's a meaning behind it if if you're making art that has no meaning to it that didn't mean something to you that you look at the art and just go okay yeah that person was drawing fruit in a basket on the table because that's what they had to draw that's that's the art that i i cannot personally appreciate if you show me art where it's like somebody literally sat there and took an eight by eight canvas and stabbed that thing probably about 15 million times and guessed it back together about five times and there's holes in it and there's paint splattered all over everything, and they threw their body onto it, like, literally. To me, there's a difference, because there's meaning behind that. There's emotion behind it. It makes you feel something. It makes you step back into your creative mind and and, and think what is going on in that art piece. As per, here's a photo of a tiger. He's licking his paw. I agree with you on the texture one. 
but I know there's like a blind person out there listening. Like that's my fucking art. Like I, that's how I read shit. <laughs> like, you know, you know he's like touching it and stuff. Like, you know, that's rude. That's <laughs> amazing. Like, when he said texture, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, why do there are bumps on there to like, you guys <clears> touch <throat> it, but like, you're not supposed to touch art. And then I started thinking, wait sure. a minute, there's that, that stuff that's under the numbers on doors that blind people use to read. Sure. And like, there's a blind person out there like, I can't see paintings. So that's how I can. How dare this woman? I'm not, I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Morgan, I think like what you're doing is pretty incredible. I mean, a lot of your art is really amazing. And I mean, it's a, it's, it's a talent. A lot of people don't have something like this. And the fact that you can use it as a form of expression where a lot of people just choose not to show their emotions or keep them deep down. I mean, that's not a good way of expressing it at all, but you found a form and something that is so amazing that other people can see and hopefully maybe something awaken something inside of them. I mean, that's not easy for a lot of people to be able to do. And you found that. And I really, I appreciate you for doing the podcast. Please plug your page, plug everything where people can find your awesome paintings. Oh, well, thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, everybody can find me on Facebook as Organized Chaos with Morgan. Um, I do have an Etsy shop, but I don't have much in my shop at the moment. I just recently moved. I have to set up shop, basically reset up a whole art studio. Um, on Instagram, I am Organized Chaos W morgan all underscores because with morgan was too long of a name and i'll eventually start a facebook group where i'll be starting to post all of my pieces that i kind of want to auction off in the art group so that it kind of makes it localized so keep your eyes open on my facebook page for that but organized chaos with morgan on facebook is where you can view most of my photos and paintings and thank you for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast, and stay tuned for our next episode.